once you have the re-roughing operation, you could then uh, look at programming some pre-finishing and finishing operations. So on this particular part, I would like to go over and program a pre-finishing operation. Uh, I could be using uh, one of the advanced methods uh, like 3D offset pocketing. And I'm going to pick 3-axis uh, 3D offset pocketing in here. Now for this 3D offset Uday, pocketing... Uday. Uh, Uday, this is Joe. Uh, I just wanted to interject here. Uh, there's one thing that Uday did that uh, probably some of you picked up on. Uh, I just wanted to bring bring it to your notice. Uh, that was in the arc fitting parameters uh, in the horizontal roughing. What he had, what he did was he mentioned that he was using two times the global tolerance or the operation tolerance. Uh, that's an important point to observe for all of you who are using uh, arc fitting. The reason he's using a slacker tolerance is uh, uh, that that gives you the best uh, you know optimal fitting. Of the arcs. If you're using something tighter than the uh, operation tolerance, you're not you're not going to get uh, the too many arcs uh, being fitted. So, as a best practice, uh, we would suggest using a double the uh, you know the operation tolerance when you're using arc fitting. So, I just wanted to bring it to your notice. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. So we've just completed the uh, re-roughing process in here and we're now ready to program some finishing operations. So we'll start out with a pre-finishing operation. This could be done using uh, from one of these available three axis advanced methods and I would like to uh, uh, show you how we could use a 3D offset pocketing operation to program this. Now this method is also known as a constant 3D step over machining or also known as constant scallop machining. Now, uh, in this particular method, you would have to select a, a part region. You would need to select either a closed curve or a chain of edges that form a closed loop. And you can use select curve edge regions or you could even use select flat areas or predefined regions using any one of these or combination of these to select your part region. So I'm going to use select curve edge regions and we'll just grab a curve or a surface edge that's right along the edge of the part in here. Now, uh, a couple of things that we want to make a note of here is uh, the edge that you select, you need to make sure that you have a, a solid surface or a mesh geometry that extends past the uh, part region in order for the three axis offset pocketing tool pad. And you would select the tool ideally for a 3D offset pocketing, you want to use a radius tool, it could be a ball mill, it would be ideal, or it could be even using a, a corner radius tool for it. So in this particular case, I'm going to pick a six millimeter ball mill. I would establish my clearance definition. I could set my cut transfer method to be skim as opposed to uh, using a clearance definition so it will skim above the highest point of the surface uh, when, it's, uh, when it's safe to transfer from one uh, cut location to the other. I could specify this in here. I'll just put in a two millimeter height. I set my feeds and speeds and in the cutting parameters uh, you could basically set your cut control in addition to the tolerance settings are very similar to what you've seen in other operations. If you're going to be programming this as a pre-finishing operation, you may want to consider leaving some stock so you can then go back and finish it. So this would leave a uniform uh, thickness around, on top of the part surface and then you can go back and generate a finishing operation. Now if you're planning to use this as a finishing operation, then you can set the stock to leave as zero. You could choose your cut direction under cut control and in this particular case, since we are programming on a core, uh, you'd want to start on the inside, which is basically start from the highest point and work your way towards the, uh, you know, steep areas on the top. The 3D offset pocketing uh, method would be ideal for parts where you do not have a lot of steep sections and there aren't any islands or other features sticking out in here. So parts like these, which have a kind of a sculpted uh, surface nature in here, similar to this, would be an ideal test case. Uh, for ideal case for 3D offset pocketing. We would then set the step over control in here. So I'm going to go pick uh, maybe 10% step over to get a nice finish and then select generate. So in this process, uh, it's going to compute the uh, 3D offset pocketing where it's going to create a tool pad with a constant uniform 3D uh, step over in here. So depending on the parameters that you put in, uh, your step over, the, the computation time could be anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes depending on the complexity of the geometry that you're working on. 
And there it is, your 3D offset pocketing was computed. Let's go take a look at the toolpath. So I'm going to click on toolpath visibility. And there it is, you can see the toolpath, uh, you know, creates a very uniform step over, as you can see right there, both on these uh, steep areas and also on these sculpted areas. So this would be a very good use case for the 3D offset pocketing toolpath. Uh, let me interject here with a uh, just a note on this 3d offset pocketing uh, a couple of notes actually uh, first thing is um, it's it's different from the projection methods uh, as you can see the toolpath uh, the the main difference being the offsets uh, the toolpath offsets are computed on the surface itself or on the on the multiple surfaces that you have as you can see uh, that the step over is actually computed on the surface so you're maintaining a constant scallop height while you're machining. Uh, number two, um, actually uh, let me go back to that first point. What's important in that uh, is if you have steep areas, uh, if you did projection pocketing, what will happen is you're going to leave some material on these steep areas. But if you did uh, 3D offset pocketing, it's going to be constant even on the steep areas, there, thereby you're, you're maintaining constant scallop machining, which is very nice method uh, when you have a uniform type of surfaces, uniform shapes like you like Ude has in this model. Uh, number two, it's probably the, uh, the most complex uh, of the toolpath methods we have in 3-axis. And so it does take a while uh, to compute that. So people who are used to parallel finishing being done in, in seconds or in minutes um, might have to wait a little bit. So you got to, you know, be a little bit cognizant of the fact that it is a complex method. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I do have an example in here uh, where you can see the uh, difference between the projection pocketing uh, versus the uh, 3D offset pocketing in here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load in this particular part. And as Joe pointed out, uh, in the case of projection pocketing, uh, the tool uh, does a, a projection onto the model versus where the offsets are computed directly on the 3D offset pocketing. So in this particular part, you can see that the 3D offset pocketing would give you a much, uh, you know, better toolpath result as opposed to a three-axis projection pocketing. So for parts like these, uh, a 3D offset pocketing would be ideal. Now I also have a quick example of how well the 3D offset pocketing works. Now this is also a good use case for 3D offset pocketing. You can see even with a very tight step over, um, you see a very nice result on the tool bag. The next thing I would like to um, go over is uh, what is probably not a best use case for a three-axis uh, 3D offset pocketing when you have a lot of steep sections in a model. So I'm going to go into uh, one of these parts in here to just to give you a quick glimpse of that in here, uh, so that you can see you know what would be a good use case to use for uh, you know 3D offset pocketing versus the other methods. Now on this particular part. You'll see that there are several uh, steep sections on this. Now, if you program a 3D offset pocketing, you'll see that the toolpad is going to write on these areas. So this is probably not a, a you know, for this particular model, this is probably not a good use of the 3D offset pocketing toolpad. So you may want to consider programming this using from one of the other methods. Now again, we have a roughing and a re-roughing toolpad like we talked about earlier roughing toolpath will be able to go back and you know remove material where the roughing toolpath couldn't get into based on the tool that was used in the roughing process in here so when I run a quick simulation in here uh, there's the simulation of the roughing process and then we'll go run a simulation of the re-roughing you'll notice that it cleared out material that's being left from the previous step so it makes it easier for the pre-finishing or the finishing operation on the tool as well uh, when you you know, when you have it roughed and re-roughed in multiple steps.